Hello, this is Lou DeVentura, CFI candidate at Big Sky Aviation, located at the Millville Airport in Mill Millville, New Jersey. Um, today's lesson is going to be on uh, class airspaces in the United States. Um, you might want to take out your current aeronautical chart. I have mine um, for Philadelphia and Atlantic City. Uh, to compare um, what I'm talking about as far as uh, airspaces are concerned. Um, our first airspace is Class Alpha airspace and that goes from 18,000 feet mean sea level up to flight level 600 which is 60,000 feet. And just to make it uh, brief and short, basically it's for flights, jet routes, um, that are on IFR flight plans. And for concern of a private pilot and commercial pilot right now, uh, we are not concerned with that as of right now. Um, so just to make it short and simple, Class Alpha airspace is basically for jets um, that are traveling from point to point navigation. Um, okay, Class Bravo airspace. If you look down on the chart I have here, Class Bravo airspace looks like an upside down pineapple cake. And for reason being, uh, you can find that depicted on your aeronautical chart. They're uh, outlined in blue and you also have a mode 30 nautical mile mode C veil that's around that too also. Uh, for Philadelphia, it goes from the surface up to 7,000 feet. That's the basic shape of it, but they're changing. In fact, Philadelphia is, is no longer um, um, shaped like that. It has a little bit of cutouts on each of the shelves and all. So, but again, just for a simplified purpose, um, this what is what it looks like for a class of Bravo uh, airspace. Okay, so in a class Bravo airspace, uh, you need to have an entry requirement and that needs you need to have ATC clearance uh, to allow you to travel through it or to land at it also. Um, you can be a private pilot to land there. You could be a student pilot also with student certificate as long as you have um, instruction from your um, instructor with an endorsement so you can land and take off there. Uh, you need a two-way communication radio you need to have three statue miles. You need to be clear of the clouds. Um, you will get traffic advisories and you will get also uh, aircraft separation for VFR. All right, so that takes care of Class Bravo airspace. And again, look at your chart uh, for your um, closest Class Bravo airspace again. Minus Philadelphia, since we're close there to South Jersey at Millville Airport, and uh, whatever which one is yours, uh, look at that to get the reference as far as um, the height requirements and the base requirements and the surface requirements. Class Charlie airspace, and for Class Charlie airspace, I'm going to be using Atlantic City Kilo Alpha Charlie Yankee. Um, and now that is also depicted as here on the chart. If you see here, it says Class Charlie Airspace. And with Class Charlie Airspace, um, again, uh, for Linux City, it's cylinder and it goes from the surface up to 4,100 feet. Um, again, depicted by your chart, you have to look at it and look at the height requirements and shelf requirements. Um, again, on Class Charlie Airspace, the requirements you need uh, a prior to a communication before you enter. You need to talk to him. You need, he needs to know who you are. Um, you could be a student certificate going in there. That's for the minimum pilot qualifications. Uh, you need a two-way communication radio to, to uh, be able to fly through it or land there. Um, you also need three statue miles. That's important. Um, you also need to have a 152. Now, 152 can be an airplane, but I remember it easily by a thousand feet above the clouds, 500 feet below the clouds, and 2,000 feet horizontally away from the clouds. Um, 
you do get IFR traffic separation, but again, for a private pilot, uh, we are not going to be worried about that right now. You do get traffic advisories. Um, so again, look at your chart and to be able to tell what the height and your shelf requirements are there. Okay. Class Delta airspace, and as Martha King and John King talk about, as Class D is for dialogue. Um, for me, I'm going to use Northeast Philly as a uh, example, and that's uh, Papa November Echo, and the height requirement on that is at 2600 feet and from the airport going out to the radius is five miles uh, statue miles so you have five statue miles in that ring there for class D airspace uh, class D airspace again you need to have two-way communication prior to entering that airspace uh, you can be a student pilot flying to there that's your minimum pilot qualifications. Um, you do need a two-way communication. You do need to have three statue miles again uh, for, from you know uh, from the clouds, and you also need to have the 152. Again, it's a thousand feet above the clouds, 500 feet below, and 2,000 feet horizontal from the clouds. Okay, now since we talked about Class Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, uh, we're going to talk about Class Echo airspace. And Class Echo airspace, again, like John and Martha King say, it's everything else. Um, if you look on the chart here that I have, Class, uh, class Echo airspace starts at 14,500 feet. MSL up to but not including 18,000 feet. So really it's 17,999 feet MSL. Okay, so uh, Class Echo Airspace, and the reason I believe uh, Class Echo Airspace starts at 14,500 feet is um, out there in California there's a, there's a uh, mountain called Mount, Mount Whitney um, that's about 14,200 some feet or something like that above sea level. So I believe the FAA figured, you know, let's make it uh, 14,500 feet. This way, um, it's not in anybody's uh, way as far as uh, any mountainous terrain. That's the highest mountain peak uh, in North America. That's uh, going to affect uh, class echo airspace. So class echo airspace again starts at 14,500 feet up to 17,999 feet, not including 18,000 feet, and it also goes down to the surface, but again, it's also depicted on your aeronautical charts, uh, magenta colored and blue colored. Um, your magenta color goes down to 700 feet. Again, that is for basically for IFR separation traffic, uh, for traffic trying to get down to airports that have a uh, instrument approach. And above that is 1,200 feet. So again, it's everything's depicted on your chart. Uh, as far as it, it, this sample here uh, is not really the best, uh, so that's why it's best to look at your look at your chart there. Um, so your blue color goes down to 1,200 feet, and anything uh, anything other than that is all class echo airspace. Um, class class echo airspace also can go down to the surface, and using Millville Airport uh, you'll see a dotted magenta line going around the airport in the five mile radius there. That is to let uh, class echo airspace travel all the way down to the surface. Again this is all for uh, IFR traffic. Um, so again look at your chart to depict uh, where you see that um, as, as far as class echo airspace going down to um, the surface. Now for class echo airspace uh, there is no entry requirements. Uh, your minimum pilot qualification can be a student certificate, 
there is no two-way communications required. Um, you do need, though, um, minimum visibility of three statue miles. And again, uh, you, you still need to keep that distance from the cloud requirements for VFR, uh, the 152 rule, as being 1,000 feet above, 500 feet below, and 2,000 feet horizontally from those clouds. Okay, the next airspace I'd like to talk to you about is Class Gulf airspace. And Class Gulf airspace is the portion of the airspace that has not been designated as Class Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, or Echo airspace. There is no specific pilot certification that's required, no specific equipment is required, and its transition to echo is shown on your sectional. Um, there is some cloud requirements though that are still um, pertinent uh, in class Gulf airspace. If you're above 1,200 12, feet <clears throat> in class uh, Gulf airspace during the day, you need one mile visibility and a 152 rule. If you're above 1,200 feet again, uh, during the night in class Gulf airspace, now you need three miles of visibility and a 152 rule. Uh, if you're below 1,200 feet in class Gulf airspace during the day, you need one mile of visibility and you need to stay clear of the clouds. Uh, again, 1,200 feet below in class Gulf airspace during the night, you need three miles of visibility and the 152 rule. And again, it's very important. If you don't uh, really understand the USA airspace classes, please grab an instructor, uh, get a valid, um, effective uh, aeronautical chart. Sit down with your instructor, go over all the airspaces that you don't understand, and really, really um, succumb to the fact that you need to really understand these airspaces so you do not get. Uh, or violate any uh, FAA rules and uh, get your license revoked or cause any problems with other um, aircraft. Uh, it was a great uh, lesson today. I hope you learned something. And if you have any questions or comments, you can direct it to ldv34 at aol.com. That's Lima Delta Victor 34 at aol.com. Again, thank you and happy and safe flying.